Well, that was fascinating, right? Yeah. How's everyone feeling? Good? Okay. Still energized? Still excited? Um, so I think the next session will be just as interesting. Uh, we're still talking about technology. Um, it's called If We Can Build It, We Can Break It. Um, and it's going to be with Chris Valasek, who is the security lead at Uber, which I'm sure we all use a lot, um, in Uber's Advanced Technology Center. So please join me in welcoming Chris to the stage. Awesome. We'll move forward. Um, so I, I don't think anyone here can deny that we probably live, or most definitely live, in the most connected society in the history of the world, right? Um, we have supercomputers in our pockets. 50 years ago, this, this would have been in this entire room of space, right? But it's in your pocket now. You have unlimited information at your hands, and you can get it on any time. People are probably on the internet right now. Right? Um, your refrigerator can connect to the internet and tell you that your milk's going to go bad. Or you can see what's inside the refrigerator without even opening the doors. Um, your, your car, for example, is on the internet. It's on our cell networks. So we can get real-time traffic information. So you know if there's a wreck before the Lincoln Tunnel that you can maybe try to divert and go a different way. These things are amazing. Even children's toys, a Furby, can connect your in-home Wi-Fi. I love this stuff. I think it's so cool. I love to be able to lock my doors as I'm walking down the street um, while I'm going to catch the bus that I know is going to be there in two minutes because it's coming to my phone. This is fantastic, right? I encourage this technology to keep advancing. Um, but at the same time, you get headlines like these. Um, you know, such and such was hacked. Uh, this was remotely compromised. Some are um, kind of nifty, right? Someone could hack a skateboard that has Wi-Fi in it. Uh, some are scarier. For example, um, someone could hack a, a pacemaker and, and literally stop your heart. Or uh, you, know, you could hack a car, like Dr. Charlie Miller and I did. And we were able to hack this car over the internet and physically control it to do really whatever we wanted to do. Um, these things are kind of scary, but I think that they actually benefit people as well. But many times people ask, well, why can't we just make these things unhackable? Um, I'll tell you why. Computers are hard. Programming is hard. In a former life, I was a developer, and uh, I will admit that I was not a good developer. That's why I went to breaking people's things instead of building them. I, I just have a knack for it. Um, Writing things that are complex is even harder, especially when it takes input from the outside world. And we're taking things that traditionally weren't connected to the outside, cars, a Furby, a fridge, and connected it to the outside. So assumptions you may have had 10 years ago about this device don't really hold true now. Um, we've been trying to write secure web browsers for 25 years. And if you pay attention to monthly patch cycles, every month, Internet Explorer and Safari and Chrome always have updates. Um, writing secure code is something humans aren't good at. Until we have Skynet writing all of our code in perfect computer code, then we're doomed. Um, one of the main drawbacks I see, though, too, is not only in, in, in primary, but secondary education. You can go to amazing institutions throughout the world, and you can get a degree in computer science, and they will teach you how to be a really good programmer. You're a developer. You can build great things. But when I went, and it's still true today, um, you have maybe one course about security. So they're telling you to make, these, make all this code, and they're telling you to connect it online, and they're telling you to do it fast, and they're telling you to do it efficiently. But, you know, they spend about two minutes telling you, hey, what if this happens? And you have to worry about secure code. And I think it matters more and more as time goes on, because now we see that cars are part of this interconnected infrastructure we have. Um, you know, implantable devices, medical equipment. These things at once were siloed by themselves. But now um, they're connected online. So we do need to worry about the security. Uh, of these things because uh, many times it, it could be a life or death situation. But don't worry, we're here to help, right? Uh, a, a colleague of mine, uh, Kirian, said, hackers are the internet's immunity system. And I really do believe that because not everyone's cut out to make things, um, and not everyone's cut out to break things, but I think people that break things have a very different perspective because I only have to look at your amazing product and find one little place where you messed up. 
and go, ha, 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 look, here. Um, the good thing is there's more good guys out there than bad guys. So when you see these headlines, um, you, should, you should be happy about it because they're pointing things out. This thing right here is a USB stick that uh, Chrysler Fiat had to send out to 1.4 million people. Probably cost them a lot of money to do that. Um, but it's good because we identified flaws in a car that could let someone take it over remotely, but we told them about it and got it fixed. So hackers are out there really not to harm you. We're just curious people and like breaking things. So my advice to you would be to go find your local neighborhood hacker, uh, give them a hug, and encourage them to keep breaking things because by breaking things, we all have better, uh, more secure products in our future. That's it. Thanks a lot.